Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Dr. Tom LeHue. We're going to talk about Enneagram Type 2, and we're going to throw out some suggestions for jobs for a Type 2. Now, keep in mind, you're not in any way limited to a list like this. This is just, this is just a discussion starter. If you were trying to figure out what you might be good at, here's a list of some ideas or possibilities. You could become anything you want to become. But, you know, the Enneagram shows us that we're wired in a certain way to care about certain things. And it can kind of help us figure out what our purpose in life is. You know, whatever job you take, you're going to tend to show up in a similar way because there's certain fundamental motivations that you have that go along with your Enneagram type or your personality type. And so these are things that are going to drive your behavior, your character, what you care about, and your actions. And so here's a list of possibilities of some of the jobs that an Enneagram Type 2 might find rewarding in life. Now before we jump into this information, just a reminder in the description below is a link to my website, TomLahue.com. I do offer Enneagram relationship coaching. You know, the Enneagram is a great tool to figure out what you want to do in life, but it's also a great tool to help us to figure out how to get from being stuck, to find our motivation once again. Are you feeling unmotivated? You're not sure what you want to do with your life? Or are you having problems in your relationships? It's a great tool to help us understand how to get along with people as well. Because every person you meet is an Enneagram type. It's just the way it is. And I would love for you to check out my Present to Life coaching program. It's a three-month program designed around you, unique and special to you. All right, so let's start by talking about type twos, you know, the giver, the helper, and talk about what they might be looking for in a job. And then we'll just go through a, a list of 10 different possible jobs that I think might fit with what an Enneagram type two, their superpowers that they bring into, into this world, into the workplace. So I've got a little list here in front of me. Uh, to help me remember uh, what I wrote down, here are some things that I think twos might consider when they're looking for a job. You know, twos are typically driven by a desire to be of value to other people. They are in the worth and value group, and so they might distinguish themselves as people who are there to offer care and support and encouragement. And uh, twos often need to be appreciated for their thoughtfulness and their kindness. Now, they may not say it out loud like that, but if you fail to show appreciation to a two, it's going to take a toll on them. They're going to wonder if they're really in the right job. Are they really making a difference? Uh, are they really uh, doing something valuable? So it's important that if you work with a type two, uh, you have somebody that works for you that is a type two, that you give them the encouragement that they need and let them know that their life is making a difference, their contribution is necessary to your work environment. They seek to express their caring nature in helpful and um, in helpful ways and in thoughtfulness. When twos are doing well, they show up with a great deal of attention, appreciation, encouragement. They have a lot of focus on other people and on being a blessing to other people. They love jobs. They find jobs fulfilling where they're making a difference in the lives of other people. I always think of um, you know Helen Keller that. Uh, you know, in the, in the history of this person who has no ability to see or hear, and she has that teacher, I think her name was Anne, who shows up to help her. Now, I don't know what her Enneagram type was. I just think of that kind of coming alongside of people and helping them to, to, uh, to be uh, all that they can be, giving nurture and encouragement and care along the way. In a career, type twos generally look for the following elements in order to feel fulfilled. Um, and we will get into the jobs, okay? This is going to be a long video, so buckle down and let's explore uh, more about yourself. Okay, so what do Enneagram 2s look for in a job? Number one, opportunities to help and support others. Type 2s are at their best when they can actively contribute to the well-being and support of other people, whether that's through direct care uh, or emotional support or other forms of assistance. So a job where you're helping other people, where you're focused on other people, where you're taking care of other people. And so some jobs are maybe already starting to come to mind. Like for example, nursing. We'll get there in just a minute. Okay, number two, something that Enneagram type twos might be looking for in a job is a job with a lot of interpersonal interaction. 
or at least a job with some interpersonal interaction. I could imagine that being locked away in a cubicle at the corner of a warehouse somewhere, crunching numbers, is going to feel exhausting to it too because they do they shine when they interact with people, whether that's on the phone or whether that's direct interaction. I think a two is going to do their best. Now, they could get exhausted and get frustrated with people and need some time to withdraw, no doubt. But as a general rule, I think twos are very sociable uh, people who like to interact and like to work around and with other people in direct interaction. So they thrive in roles that involve engaging with people, and they tend to do really well at this. Now, not every two, I understand, but as a general rule, twos tend to do interactions well. Building relationships and feeling like they're a part of a community or feeling like they're a part of a team. Uh, number three, a job that provides appreciation and acknowledgement. Recognition for their efforts and contributions is important for type twos. You can say that appreciation is the air they breathe. It's their oxygen, and without it, they're going to feel like maybe they're in the wrong profession. They value being appreciated and acknowledged for the support that they give. All of us value that, but it may not be as critical or essential. I always say twos thrive on appreciation, threes on admiration, and fours on validation. And we can talk more about that in a later video. Number four, a job that has a meaningful impact. You know, all of us want to believe that our lives are making a difference. Um, all of us want to believe that our life is, is uh, meaningful in some way. And all of our lives are meaningful. But twos want to feel that their work is making a difference in the lives of others. That they are helping others and encouraging others and are the wind beneath the wings for others. Whether that's on an individual level or whether that's in a community. And so you might think of things like probably like therapist or social worker. And again, we're going to get to that in just a minute. Number five, a harmonious work environment. So whatever the environment is, whether it's an office, a university, you know, whatever that, uh, a hospital, doctor's office, whatever that environment is, it needs to be one where people are getting along, where people love each other or are taking care of one another, where they're thoughtful and respectful to each other. A collaborative, supportive, non-competitive atmosphere aligns with the type two's preference for harmony and positive relationships in the workplace. Number six, uh, uh, an environment where there is opportunities for emotional connection. Careers that allow twos to form emotional connections and genuinely care for others align with their empathetic nature. So a job where you're allowed to love people and demonstrate that love and show that care and concern for other people. Number seven, flexibility to nurture. Jobs that allow them the flexibility to attend to other people's needs. Sometimes it's an intuitive and spontaneous way, uh, which can be especially appealing to type twos. A job where there's stability and security. While not unique to type twos, a lot of us really long for stability and security, think sixes for example, a secure job environment could provide a foundation that twos need to so that they can then focus on helping others without excessively worrying about is my job safe, is my job on the line. So that was number eight. Number nine, growth and personal development. Opportunities for personal growth and emotional growth, learning how to set healthy boundaries and understanding their own needs are always important for type twos. And then number 10, an ethical and value aligned work. Engaging in work that aligns with their personal values and ethical standards, especially type two wing ones, I could see, don't ask them to go against their conscience uh, and to do something you know that's gonna hurt another person in some way. Ultimately, type twos are fulfilled in careers where they can express these inherent qualities, these fundamental motivations of impulses and compulsions, of empathy and generosity, with a desire to support and uplift others within an environment that acknowledges, acknowledges these values and these contributions. Okay, so what kind of jobs might we think of? We've already mentioned a couple of them. What kind of jobs might come to our mind when we think about a type two? Something that they might gravitate towards, something they might excel in. You know, what aligns, what jobs and career fields align with their fundamental motivations? 
Well, they're called the giver and they're called the helper and they're characterized by a strong need to be loved, appreciated, wanted, a tendency to be caring people who were generous and people oriented. And type twos thrive in these kinds of roles that allow them to give support and nurture to other people. What a wonderful thing that is. I mean, just pause for a second and think what a wonderful thing that is. It's not a bad thing to be an introverted person. It's not a bad thing to have strong boundaries. It's not a bad thing to, uh, to be a reclusive person. But just notice that most type twos are not wired that way. Not that you're not an introvert, a lot of ISFJs, for example, are twos. Uh, but not that, not that you have to be an extrovert, but just an environment where you can attend and care for people. What a wonderful thing that is, and that should be encouraged. And before we get into this, let me just say, is that what you used to be? Have you gotten cynical in your uh, in your in your life have you have you gotten bitter have you been um you know not cared for and not appreciated and maybe you feel like man i used to be like that i'm just not like that anymore i just don't care anymore and that that's such a sad thing and i i've met some twos that have hit this kind of rock bottom place where they're just withdrawn and kind of closed in and very self-protective and they don't allow themselves to go out there in the world and really truly love people because it can it can hurt if that love is not reciprocated or if you, that love is not uh, wanted or needed. And I just want to encourage you for a second to, to remember that you came into this world with just such a vast capacity to love others and to be loved, to receive love from others. It's just mind-blowing how you came into this world with this need to attend to other people and to feel connected and to feel loved. And I just want to wake that back up in you and say, you know, this is part of your purpose in life is to show the rest of us what real love, real concern, real altruism looks like. And I know it's not always going to be reciprocated. It's not always going to be given back to you. You're not always going to receive the appreciation that that you deserve, and I just want to apologize on behalf of the rest of us, um, and I just want to say we're sorry, and I know that that can't really fix anything, but I want you to do the deep internal work to grieve the loss that you, that you need to grieve. Well, look, we don't live in the Garden of Eden, and we're never going to really feel the kind of love in this world like we may have if we were in a perfect environment, but we're not. And the Enneagram shows us our brokenness. And it says the same things the Bible says to us, just uses different words, that we are in a broken, fallen world where people don't treat each other well. They aren't always nice to each other. We aren't always caring and compassionate. And listen, we need you to remind us of those values. And I know it's exhausting. And I know that sometimes, you know, you don't always receive back from others the attention and the dedication and the, the, the appreciation that you give away. I just want to encourage you to grieve the loss and uh, to find people in your life that really will show love and kindness to you and uh, focus your attention on, on yourself first on healing, on grieving, and uh, on working and growing yourself, and then show up in this world to show the rest of us. Let that value flow through you to show the rest of us what true love, kindness, compassion looks like. Because it's a beautiful thing when it's, when it's running at full volume. It's a wonderful thing, and maybe you remember what that felt like. All right, so let's, enough about that, the personal growth moment. Let's get into the list. Number one, I think when I think of a type two, I think of this job first. And that is nurse, healthcare worker, um, you know, attendant. Uh, I think about the person in the uh, children's hospital, the nurse, the charge nurse, the nurses in a children's hospital, in a nursing home, uh, taking care of other people in a very real and direct way. And let me tell you, if you've ever been in the hospital and you've been in a crisis or your child has been in a crisis, when you find a nurse that is warm and loving and kind and attentive, who also knows their stuff and can do their job, it is just such a wonderful thing 
to have that nurse walk with you. And not you can't be a doctor. I'm not saying that. I'm not trying to be, you know, limit you in any way. Of course you could be a doctor. Of course you could be a research, you know, PhD and whatever. But I'm just saying you're wired already in this way as a nurse. Uh, you show up in that kind of energy already. And when you find a career that aligns with that, man, and you can start making a living doing what you already do in this world, what a fantastic moment that is. So this profession of nursing or healthcare worker allows type twos to directly care for and nurture others, offer emotional support and physical care to people in need. It's like the job was created for the archetype two, okay? Number two, another job that comes to mind when I think of type twos, I just can't help but think of this job, is it just fits so natural, and that is that of teacher or educator, in some fashion as teacher. And I would say what comes to my mind primarily is elementary school teachers because twos tend to have that kind of warm maternal energy about them of balancing instruction and education and advice if you want to connect with a two listen to their advice listen to their instruction but at the same time being compassionate and caring and making sure that people feel loved and cared for and to me that just lines up with teacher and especially probably for the ladies out there especially uh, elementary teachers, primary teachers, preschool teachers, that is just like a perfect environment. I get it, they can be terrible, they can be exhausting, you can get frustrated with it, I understand. But type twos often excel in educational settings where they can offer support and guidance and encouragement to students, tailoring their uh, approach to meet each individual student's specific needs. What a great job. What a great career for a type two. What's funny is I have a lot of friends. I'm blessed with a lot of friends and a lot of people I interact with. And I scroll down through Facebook and I see some of these twos that I know. I often see them in nursing uniforms. I see them as elementary teachers. And it's like, it just, and they may not even know that they're twos. And some of the people I'm thinking of, they have no idea about the Enneagram. They don't understand it. But I'm just like, it's so amazing that you ended up exactly in these jobs that are a perfect fit for you. Okay, number three, and that is that of counselor or therapist or life coach. And I might even put in here like ministry. Any area of, of a, a career where you're interacting with people in a personal way, listening to their story, helping them through the struggles of marriage or relationships or just life in general. Uh, a lot of nines would do well at this. I think a lot of fours would do well at this uh, as counselor or therapist. These roles allow twos to show up in their natural empathy and they're, they often have great listening skills. Listen, one of the things I know about twos is they often know a lot about other people and sometimes people don't know much about you. Twos can sometimes be very guarded people. They have a fear of being exposed or a fear of exposure, and they tend to interact with people and make the conversations about others, which is very loving, very, you know, people love having that around them. Somebody who listens to them, who focuses their attention on them. In fact, it can even look like you're flirting sometimes because you're so focused on giving attention to other people and they're not used to it. And they make it the wrong idea, and you may have no you know, intentions of going in that direction, but people just are overwhelmed when they're around an attentive two because they've never had anybody attend to them like this. And you can use that, leverage that skill or that natural inclination to be a therapist or a coach um, or um, ministry, something like that, where you're walking with people, listening to people, and helping them navigate through the difficulties of this life. And let me tell you guys, this life is difficult. There's financial problems, there's relationship problems, you know, there's job and career problems, there's interpersonal problems with, it's just a lot of problems. There's no shortage of problems. Where's the shortage? People to help others through those problems. So helping people through their emotional hangups, their emotional challenges, their mental challenges, uh, and helping them to realize that they're not alone, but there's somebody there to care for them. What a great field or career choice for type twos. 
Okay, number four, social worker. Social worker. Now, this can be a difficult job, as they all can be. This can be a very difficult job because you come along, you offer help and support in difficult family relationships, but maybe you never feel like you get it right or you're never able to really rescue uh, as much as you would like to. And so it can be very difficult and traumatizing to be in these unstable and unhealthy environments, these home environments, and it can be difficult. So it takes a strong person. Remember, twos under stress look like eights. When twos are pushed into a corner and they are faced with challenges, they become bigger and stronger and more powerful. And in this role, type twos can advocate for and assist individuals and families in need, offering support and resources with care and compassion. What a great job. And they aren't paid enough. Most of these jobs I'm talking about are not paid enough. <clears throat> but it can be a very difficult, very specific skill set required for social worker. Number five, human resources professional. So somebody in that human resources field, whether it's an office, a law office, or a, you know, a giant office, warehouse, whatever it may be, HR in roles involve uh, the caring aspect of a company. So this is the part of a company that has to care about its employees, has to care about people uh, from onboarding to conflict resolution, especially onboarding. Man, that is designed for twos to just welcome people and you know get them to feel like they're a part of this community. But conflict resolution, which, which all of this might suit a type twos uh, people-oriented nature. All right, number six, customer service representative. Again, this could be an exhausting job. It may be a very low paying job, but type two's natural warmth and a desire to care for people and to help them out in their crisis and assist people that can give just create an excellent um, dynamic for those uh, who you know are needed in that field. People asking questions about your products or questions about your company, making inquiries. Um, customer service representative, think even like admissions counselor in a college, people calling in, having questions, having problems, and those needing to be resolved and cared for with a kind tone. I think nines could be very good at this as well. Twos, the problem though is I think if there's a lot of conflict, you know, on the other end, people upset and angry, I think that could be very draining for twos to always be on the receiving end of that and always feeling like somebody's mad at you. When they're really not mad at you, they're mad at the product or they're mad at the uh, corporation, but that could be very draining, so just warning. Number seven, nonprofit worker. And again, you could put ministry in here as well, but working for a cause you believe in. You know, you might think, first thing you might think of like is helping the homeless or think about like an orphanage. Uh, maybe you have an orphanage or a children's home that comes to mind or some kind of health facility for people with specific problems. Think Down syndrome or cerebral palsy or something like that. Or just gathering together people with special needs and giving them a mom's day out or something like that. Uh, adult daycare kind of thing. Particularly roles that involve direct support and aid could be very fulfilling for type 2. So nonprofits. Uh, that kind of thing. All right, number eight, event planners. Event planners. Now, I don't know about this one. A two-wing one be a better event planner than a two-wing three. I don't know, but I just think twos, they have generally this sense of like, let's make this wedding just a wonderful day for the bride. Let's make this memorial service just a wonderful event to honor this person, you know, uh, but I think event planner, this role involves creating enjoyable and memorable experiences for others and could be very rewarding for a type two. When everybody says, wow, Mary, we couldn't have done it without you. You just made this gathering fantastic. And attention to details. And a lot of twos are very strategic people. And, um, you know, to, to just see all the different components that need to come together to create this uh, to create this feeling or this perception or to create this moment, this special moment that will live in the hearts of people. That's just right up a two's alley. To be the host. I mean, think the two wing three is called the host. And this is what we're saying is creating an event where you get to use all of that good hosty goodness, that good hostess skills and goodness 
to just make people feel at home, make people feel warm. Think like even like the greeter or the host at a restaurant or a hotel or Disney. Or, I mean, it's just right up your alley. All right, number nine, personal assistant slash secretary slash office administrator slash and the list goes on. But type twos often excel in roles where they can offer support uh, to others in all of their tasks, helping to organize and manage day-to-day -day activities, to be that essential person that the office couldn't function without you. You know, twos do kind of have that perception anyway, that they'd be lost without me. Oh, what would they do without me? And just become that essential person in the office. Think like a spider with a spider web and you got all these different components at work, all these different employees. And then right in the center is, you know, Mary or Sarah or Jack or whoever that just, you know, knows uh, people's schedules and is you know, making sure that they have all the resources they need, making the phone calls for them. And I could just see that too, feeling very fulfilled if everybody, you know, appreciates that and is, I don't think twos need a lot, but every once in a while they just need somebody to say, thank you, Mary, really appreciate it. We'd be lost without you. Our office just couldn't make it without you. That may be all that two needs to just take a deep breath and say, I'm making a difference. I'm making a difference. I don't need to be the first person out there on the line. I don't need to be out there in the front, but I need to feel like I'm in a supporting role where everybody, you know, is being blessed because of my existence. And that is a great job, sort of behind the scenes. It may not be behind the scenes. It may be the first person that gets, you know, the, the, the office visit. But I just think that receptionist, secretary, personal assistant, administrator, all that kind of rolled up into one. And number 10, uh, nutritionist or dietitian. This career allows type twos to be supportive individuals in improving the health and well-being of others and to provide care and valuable advice. Now, at the very lowest end of this, maybe might be like the cafeteria mom, you know, the cafeteria worker, knowing all the kids by name and all that. I didn't mean lowest, like the least. I just mean like <laughs> Like the, the, when it comes to my mind, like when I was a kid, you know, Mrs. Vertna, who's just knows everybody, loves everybody. Everybody loves her. And she's just taking care of all these kids in this, in this way. But I think you could also expand this into like nutritionist or dietitian, offering helpful advice about helping people be healthy and live more fulfilling lives. So in each of these roles, type two's natural inclination to help and support others can be a significant asset in allowing them to find fulfillment and satisfaction in their own lives. When they're able to show up, when you're able to show up in a way that offers care, concern, love, attention, appreciation for others, and that is reciprocated back to you, your battery is charged, you're feeling like you're living a life on purpose, you know you're making a difference, and that's my hope for you going forward is to show up to life with that kind of excitement, that kind of energy to be present to your life, present to your work, and to show the rest of us what love, compassion, kindness, attention, affection, to show us what that means. You know, at your worst, you're just hurting that people aren't giving that love to you, but at your best, you're showing the rest of us uh, what that really means. Thank you guys for all you do. Thank you for your love and support. Thank you for your generosity. We don't tell you enough how much we appreciate it, but thank you for all that you do, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.